Hi, I'm Ben Glicksman. I'm here with fellow SI College Football Raiders Zach Ellis and Martin Rickman, and we're here to talk to you guys today about some names that might not be on your radar now, but come October, come November, may be dominating the national news cycle. Um, so basically, I want to start with you, Zach. Who is a player right now that no one may be talking about, but could become a big story later this season? Well, I think we'll definitely have to keep our eye on Jacob Coker, the quarterback, incoming transfer quarterback at Alabama. We last saw Coker losing out the starting job to Jameis Winston at Florida State last year. He transferred to Alabama, wasn't there during the spring, but people are already really high on him and almost anointing him to be the guy that's going to take over for the depart A.J. McCarron, who was one of the more you know successful quarterbacks in Alabama history. People don't know much about him right now, but he's a guy who I think if he can go in there and be as successful as people expect him to be, especially at Alabama under offensive coordinator Lane Kiffin, who has had success with quarterbacks before, people will know who he is in the SEC come the end of the season. And it's not like he doesn't have weapons. He'll come in, he'll have Derrick Henry, he'll have TJ Yeldon, he'll have Amari Cooper, he'll have OJ Howard, he'll have playmakers. But what do you think as far as just the pressure coming into a situation like this? McCarron was the guy for so long, championship quarterback, what do you think it's going to be like the year after with a guy like Coker coming in and them expecting, after coming so close last year, to be in the college football playoff? Yeah, I mean, we've already seen Nick Saban already tempering the expectations, as he always does when asked about Coker. The guy wasn't even there, you know, during the spring. He's arriving for the fall, and people don't know what to expect. But, I mean, coming into a situation like that, you're right. He has the talent. We know what he has there as far as his roster is concerned. But how quickly can he acclimate to a new offense that not, is not just a new offense to him, but it will be to the, the rest of the team, too, with a new offensive coordinator with Kiffin there? There might be some growing pains early on, but I think given what kind of coach Saban is kind of a coach on the fly kind of guy and be able to make adjustments as the season goes on. Uh, Coker could be a guy who could really flourish uh, at, on this Alabama team. Yeah, and if there's, if there's one thing we know about Alabama, people are going to be paying attention. If Coker does well, he's going to be a big name. And as the quarterback at Alabama, you're automatically under a spotlight. Absolutely. So turn to you, Martin. Who is a guy that maybe you've been following pretty closely that nation should know about heading into the season? Well, it's another quarterback, but it's a guy that people don't follow as closely um, in a school out in West Virginia. It's Rakeem Cato from Marshall. He's a guy who's thrown for over 8,000 yards over the last two seasons. I mean, that, those are numbers that anywhere else in the country pretty much he becomes, you know, th this is a Heisman favorite type of player. But with Bill Legg as the offense coordinator out Mar at Marshall and having Doc Holliday running the type of offense that he's running, Cato's comfortable and he's a senior. And he's just going up the record books for Marshall, which has had some pretty good quarterbacks in the past and guys like Chad Pennington and Byron Leftwich. Marshall's schedule also lends itself really well to a good season. They don't have a marquee non-conference game, and most of the foes that they're playing are guys that they have beaten. They had won 10 games last year, or they're teams that they'll probably be favored against. It's really shaping up for him to have a big year in a big way and continue to put up just tons of yards. We've seen just last year alone, every year there's a couple non-power conference quarterbacks who rise to national prominence. Last year, you think Derek Carr at Fresno State, mm -hmm. you think uh, Jordan Lynch at Northern Illinois. How does Rakeem Cato stack up to some of these non-power conference stars from the past couple seasons? He's in that same, same mold, same build as those guys. You know, Lynch's biggest problem was maybe he wasn't as quick or he didn't have as good of an arm, so he couldn't throw to the far side of the field. That got exposed, obviously, in the draft. You know, Carr had some issues as well. People were worried about his deep ball. Cato's problem is his sight. He's listed around six foot, but he's not. You know, he's one of those guys who's maybe 5'10", 5 5'11". 5 that doesn't really hurt him, though. He's the type of player, he stands up in the pocket real tall. He bases his game around a guy like Russell Wilson, who also wasn't super tall. He can run the option all right, can make the deep ball reads but he needs his wide receivers to step up. He's got one guy he's been playing with, Tommy Schuler, for a long time since he was a kid, but outside of Schuler, they haven't had a consistent threat. They lost their best tight end, Gator Hoskins, to graduation, and it's just a question of who else is gonna catch the ball for them. Well, if there's one thing we know, everything that we basically say in July and August is going to be wrong come the season, so there's gonna be guys who uh, rise on the radar. We saw this yep. last year with Trey Mason at Auburn, Andre Williams at Boston College. Some guys are gonna shine, so Hey, maybe this year it's Jacob Coker and Rakeem Cato. For SI.com, I'm Ben Glicksman here with Martin Rickman and Zach Ellis.